How's it going YouTube? My name is LB Ninja 7 your resident Mistweaver monk. And guys, today we're gonna be making a raid guide for Mistweaver in 10.2. Whether you're a returning Mistweaver or brand new to Mistweaver, this video should have everything that you need to get started in the raid. If you're looking for a Mythic Plus guide, that will be down in the description below, along with my week wars and some other helpful links. But let's go ahead and get into it. So how I like to start these videos is first by talking about the stat priority. So your first stat that you're looking for, obviously, is going to be item level because intellect is just king main stat is king but after that your secondary stats you want haste now you ideally want to push haste above 27 percent and there's reasons behind that but mainly it just lets you get a couple more global cooldowns off during your times of ramp but above 27 percent and then it's okay to go above 30 percent slightly just know that beyond 30 percent you will get slightly diminished returns so after you get your haste to around 30% then you're gonna push your crit up to 30% because not only is it next in line for how much throughput it provides you but crit and haste are the only stats that actually work with your mana what do I mean by that well mana tea is how you sip to drink for mana in the middle of fights it's very important and it's our main way that we're gonna be able to control our mana bar and haste makes you drink it faster to get back into the action quicker while crit allows you to get more stacks because your stacks can crit if you gain a stack of manatee making you consume it longer get more mana back it can crit giving you two stacks but like i said those are just your two best throughput st stats so you want to get one haste to 30 percent crit to 30 percent and then after that put as much as you can into versatility and you don't really play around mastery with this build at all it's just it's just there but i will say i always recommend simming your character on qelive.com so that you can see what the robots say is your best stat at any given moment and then next up, let's go and talk about the talents. Now, we saw a ton of changes, and although our build looks the same on the surface, there is a lot that's changed about how we play it. For starters, Misty Peaks was nerfed. It was basically just cut in half, so we don't take this two-point talent node anymore. Now that frees us up. Instead of having to choose between Shaloons and Shaoals or Unison and Focus Thunder, we now get the best of both worlds but you're probably wondering we don't take focus thunder anymore and you will be correct we now take upwelling since essence font was buffed it's not going to be a core press on cooldown button like it used to be or like we used to play around it however it is just more optimal and there are scenarios where you do press it upwelling makes it even better and focus thunder i'll talk about this but it kind of the focus thunder playstyle did see a sort of nerf we're going to get into that deeper in the video because it's going to talk about how we optimize our, our new playstyle and, and kind of dodge all these nerfs that we have received by not taking talents like focus thunder that just extend our renewing mist count when we combine it with things like rising mist and rapid diffusion so with all of that out of the way we just take upwelling now instead of focus thunder and then another very notable talent that we don't take anymore is teachings of the monastery this basically means that we do not press tiger palm in raid the only time that you should press tiger palm is is maybe on pool or if you just have nothing else to press but guys i'm telling you we have plenty of filler spells to where tiger palm just literally has no value now so with all those little disclaimers about how the talent build has slightly changed out of the way let's go and talk about all the talents that we do take so right off the bat you'll probably notice that we do take the expel harm talents now the expel harm buffing talents it's because expel harm if you don't know got a massive buff and these talents actually provide good value now and when you couple expel harms massive chunky self-heal with bounce back which makes you tankier whenever you take 12 percent or more of your health and the fact that you have two defensives and you're taking six percent less damage and you'll have a rolling shield on yourself you're just very tanky very survivable and one great thing about playing mistweaver is that it's been said i've heard maximum limit max say that monks have the most raid utility of all classes and that's really true because of our class tree so if you're the only monk in your entire raid group you're going to get a lot of value out of generous poor and close to heart 
which are just two raid buffs that you provide to your raid for basically free. You don't take the third one when walking because movement speed is just not as good as these other two. However, you do opt for more throughput from Save Them All and Summon Jade Serpent Statue. And then moving over to our Mist Weaver Talent Tree, a lot of this is at its core the same as it, it used to be. So we are still playing the one minute cooldown of Yulon, the one minute ramp cooldown play style, where every minute we can summon Yulon, cast a few enveloping mists to get some enveloping breaths on the entire raid, and then spam Vivify, still using Cloud of Focus. Now, Cloud of Focus was nerfed very heavily coming into 10.2, but it's still good mana return, it's still good efficiency, and still packs a punch on your Vivifies. Now, we're gonna get into the part that is probably gonna be the most complicated of this video, and I'm just gonna get it out of the way right off the bat. So with all these enveloping mists that you're gonna be casting while Yulon is out, you're gonna get a lot of free renewing mists from Rapid Diffusion. And we're gonna be extending all of those hots with Rising Mist. This is our most powerful talent on our talent tree. So the concept is to have still a good number of renewing mists out at the end of our ramp so that we can really capitalize on them with cleaving vivifies off of invigorating mist. But in 10.1 or before, back when we first started playing this playstyle, the idea was always just try to get as many renewing mists out as you can so that invigorating mists got maximum value. It scaled linearly. The more people that you're cleaving on, the more healing that you're going to be doing. However, in 10.2, there is a pretty big change where you'll see here, it says that it's reduced beyond five allies. So they were nerfed a bit. So how it used to look is this blue line where every target just increased in, in a linear fashion how much healing you're doing. However, now we are five target soft capped, which what that means is, is the first five allies that have Renewing Mist are gonna take maximum value healing from your Invigorating Mist, that cleaving Vivify healing. However, beyond that, there is just diminishing returns beyond five targets up to 20. You see here, you're getting basically half the value as we used to be getting if we were able to, in a theoretical world, get 20 Renewing Mists out on the entire raid. So this is a pretty big nerf, like off the top, off of our peak ramps. However, it still can be ideal to push as many Renewing Mists as we can during our ramps, because at 20, you're still higher, you're still healing more technically than you are at 12 targets that you're cleaving off of. But the reason why we're taking talents like Upwelling over Focus Thunder, which Focus Thunder was really good at maybe during our ramp, instead of having 10 targets, Focus Thunder would allow us to have like 13, 14 targets during our ramp. But as you see here, that difference, this little jump here, is just not as worth it as taking something like Upwelling that would provide even more healing than that small jump that you're getting per Renewing Mist target. So that was really confusing, I'm sure, but just know that there are gonna be different scenarios that call for you to try to get as many Renewing Mists out to cleave as much AoE healing as you can on every target in the raid, but there might be some scenarios where you're assigned a ramp during a time in a boss fight where maybe that boss just applies five dots to five different allies, and you'll just get more healing by only having five Renewing Mists out on those five guys than you would if you did like a massive ramp had 13 Renewing Mists because those five guys could be the only people needing healing. And if you have 13 Renewing Mists, each person that's getting that cleave healing will be reduced. So hopefully that made sense, but that's just kind of gonna give you an idea on how to optimize this playstyle. but I haven't even talked about the playstyle. I know this guide video is already starting to be backwards, but let's jump into it. So how this build works is you have two phases. You have your ramp window, and everything outside of your ramp window. Both are just as important as each other. If you master the ramp, but don't really know how to manage during the downtime, you'll see kind of weak throughput. But if you master the downtime, but don't really understand the gist of the ramp, then your throughput will still just be kind of bad. So my goal today is to break down both phases as simply as possible so that you can understand them and perform at your maximum capacity. Now, before we get into either of these playstyles, I want to talk about your tier set. Now, your tier set is very powerful. So, your renewing mist, so either the ones that you apply yourself, which you have two charges of, they're also going to apply a, a buff called Chi Harmony, but also 
Also, the free renewing mists that are applied through rapid diffusion do also leave behind a Chi Harmony. So if I Rising Sun Kick, whoever gets the renewing mist, whichever one of these dummies gets the renewing mist, they will also have a Chi Harmony buff. So who got it? It was this guy. So he, he also has a Chi Harmony buff. But what is Chi Harmony? Why is it so powerful? Basically, it lasts eight seconds and while they have that buff, they're going to receive 50% more healing from all of your sources. And on top of that, when that buff expires, or if you reapply a Chi Harmony on top of someone that already has one, they're going to distribute 20% of all the healing that they received while they had that buff onto any ally that has Renewing Mist. So it'll be spread evenly. So if you have 20 renewing mists out basically that chi harmony will store 20% of all the healing that you do to that individual target and then at the end of that duration it'll pop that chi harmony will pop and heal everyone for for 1 20th of 20% of all that healing so basically 1% of all that healing which means that not only are you going to want to play around your tier set because of the boosted bonus healing that you're going to be doing to those targets but you also want to play around that tier set because the four set, the, the burst, that storage burst is just extra bonus healing. So with that out of the way, let's go and get into the breakdown of your ramp and your outside of ramp, your downtime windows. Now, like I said, your ramp is pretty similar to how it used to be. You're going to summon Yulon. You're going to cast a couple of enveloping mists, which will then apply enveloping breath to your allies, which is just a small hot, but it also increases the amount of healing that they're taking. And then you're going to capitalize on all those hots that you're casting, whether it's the enveloping mists or the free renewing mists that come alongside those enveloping mists with rising mist so when you rising sun kick it just extends all of your hots by four seconds and then once you have all those hots out they're all extended you're gonna pick a target whoever needs the most healing or whoever will need the most healing most likely it'll be a tank or let's be real a hunter those guys are so squishy and you're gonna channel a soothing mist onto them and start spamming some vivifies you can even cast an extra enveloping mist and then spam vivify into that person but regardless we are looking to boost our vivifies during that soothing mist channel to just increase the amount of throughput that we're doing onto that target. But since we're taking the one minute Yulon cooldown, Yulon's only out for 12 seconds. So you're probably wondering how can we fit in all these casts in 12 seconds? Well, we take a couple of talents that really help us by giving us a lot of haste. And also, as you remember, we do push our haste as our primary stat. But those talents are Secret Infusion, which says that whenever you boost one of your spells with your Focus Thunder T, depending on which spell you boost, you're going to get a secondary stat buff for the next 10 seconds. That can last for the majority of that Yulon window. So in this case, we're going to either boost Renewing Mist or Essence Font. Nowadays, you get more value from boosting your Essence Font than you do your Renewing Mist. And that just goes back to you just getting more value out of that Essence Font than having that longer duration renewing mist during your ramp so you're going to boost your essence font before your ramp to start your ramp to give yourself that haste buff coming into your celestial and then once you summon your celestial your yulon you're going to get a 33 percent haste for eight more seconds so if you combine these two buffs you're just going to have a lot of haste and you're going to be able to pump out these spells really quickly now the number one rule during your ramp and how you can really maximize or boost your skill ceiling is by optimizing rising mist even during your ramp so if rising sun kick comes off cooldown in the middle of your ramp say you've casted two enveloping mists and rising sun kick comes off cooldown press rising sun kick and then get back to your ramp because you're going to extend all those hots and it just equates to more healing from your ramp however if you're in the middle of your ramp and you've already casted three or more enveloping mists during your yulon then just wait until you're done casting the fourth or the fifth enveloping mist, and then you can rising sun kick and extend all, the, all those hots. But if you're one or two enveloping mists into your ramp, feel free to cast a rising sun kick. And then what will that look like? Well, first off, we're gonna already have a couple of renewing mists out just from our natural rotation during our downtime of rising sun kicking to apply those free ones and just casting our renewing mist charges. 
So if you have any Renewing Mist charges available, you just want to go ahead and cast those Renewing Mists. This will apply a Chi Harmony buff, just making two more targets, or however many Renewing Mists you can get out in that last few seconds before your ramp. They're just going to take boosted healing because of your tier set. And ideally, you will have your Rising Sun Kick before your ramp so that you can extend all the hots coming into your ramp, and then it lines up the timings pretty nicely so that you can do an optimal ramp of four or five enveloping mists and then rising sun kicking and then picking a target to soothing mist and cast vivifies into however it is totally fine if you've pressed your rising sun kick and it's still ticking away on cooldown as you're coming into your ramp because like i said you can still press rising sun kick and get great value in the middle of your ramp and that's totally fine so what we're going to do is we're going to apply our renewing mist before our ramp and i'm going to be healing these dummies it's going to look a little awkward but just know that you're going to be casting enveloping mist on different targets in your raid trying to spread that enveloping breath on your entire raid so we're gonna cast both of our renewing mists we're gonna rising sun kick to extend all those hots that we already have out before our ramp we're gonna thunder focus t boosting our essence font which will give us a good chunk of haste but then also just add an essence font hot during our ramp it's not that noticeable but it's just more healing than boosting your renewing mist and then from there we're gonna summon yulon we're gonna cast four enveloping mists we're gonna rising sun kick to extend all the hots and then we're gonna pick a fifth target channel soothing mist into them cast enveloping mist and then start spamming vivifies so what this will accomplish is is it'll extend all of our hots we'll cast five total enveloping mist during our ramp window which should apply enveloping breath to the entire raid and then once we pick this target and we start spamming those vivifies we're going to see all those vivifies cleave onto all the renewing mists that we have out and then i haven't even talked about shao's lesson or shaylun's gift how Shaylun's gift works is every eight seconds during a fight, you're gonna spawn these little clouds of mist. And then once you cast Shaylun's gift, which is just a very powerful spot heal, but it heals three targets. Since you took Shaolin's lesson, you're gonna get one of four very powerful buffs. Now, ideally, you can buff yourself before all of this ramp even starts. So I'm gonna include that in this ramp before I dump the last few renewing mist charges, before I rising sun kick and then start my ramp. So without further ado, let's look at what a your typical ramp will look like. So we're gonna Shaylun's gift to give ourselves that buff. We're gonna apply renewing mists. We're gonna rising sun kick to extend all the hots and, and get rising sun kick on cooldown. Then we're gonna give ourselves a haste buff by thunder focus team, the essence font. And then we're gonna summon Yulon and start the ramp, casting four enveloping mists and then rising sun kicking again and then picking a target to soothing mist. So let's just do it. So Shaylun's gift to give ourselves the buff. We're gonna renewing mist two targets. So just renewing mist two targets. Rising sun kick, boost an essence font. Summon our Celestial. We're gonna cast four Enveloping Mist on four different targets. We're gonna Rising Sun Kick, pith, pick a fifth target and start channeling Soothing Mist. And as you see there, we get a ton of cleave healing. We have a ton of hots out. We will do a big burst window of healing. And the great thing is that you can do this once every minute. It's a very short cooldown. So you have these big peaky, bursty, windows of, of ramp. But let's do it one last time to show you once more. So we're gonna Shaylun's Gift, Renewing Mist, Renewing Mist, Rising Sun Kick, Boost an Essence Font, Summon Yulon, and start casting these Enveloping Mists. And then we're gonna Rising Sun Kick, pick another target, and start spamming these Vivify Cleaves into those targets. And then I'm going to show you one ramp where I press Rising Sun Kick in the middle of the ramp just to show you guys what it could look like. So we're going to do the same thing, do the same setup, Shaylun's Gift, cast these Renewing Mists, boost an Essence Font, and we're going to start our Yulon ramp. And then let's say that my Rising Sun Kick came off cooldown, then we would just continue our ramp. And I know I'm picking the same targets every time, so I'm getting like bad value but that just goes to show you that you press your rising sun kick in the middle of your ramp just because it, it extends your ramp even further and adds more throughput than if you don't press your rising sun kick in the middle of your ramp and if you want to see 
another way that you can further optimize your play that is playing around your tier set so you're going to see who has the chi harmony buff on them and you're going to chase those targets so during your yulon ramp as you know you're casting enveloping mess on different people the only real big difference coming into 10.2 is that you're now going to choose the people that have Chi Harmony to cast those Enveloping Mists on, because like I said, it's gonna do 50% more healing, and then it's gonna heal into that Chi Harmony buff that will pop after eight seconds, adding more healing. So I have it on half speed, but we are we just summoned Yulon, we're in the middle of our ramp, this is on the PTR by the way, and as you see here, I'm looking for targets with Chi Harmony to cast my Enveloping Mists in. I'm chasing those random procs of Rapid Diffusion, whoever it's putting those Renewing Mists on, and then I pick a target that has a chi harmony on them to spam my vivifies into to channel soothing mist and spam my Vivi vivifies into and that's how you can really maximize your your yulon ramps and maximize the the value that your tier set provides by simply just picking the targets that have chi harmony on them. that's everything that you need to know about the ramp window but probably the most challenging part is how do you play when you're not ramping well, it, it's pretty simple since now we don't press Tiger Palm anymore and we have a priority list that should help you at least get started. So when you're not in the middle of your Yulon ramp, your number one rule is to stay in melee so that your rising sun kicks can reach the boss. Since this is your highest priority spell because it just provides the most value by extending all of your hots. So number one in your priority list is to cast Rising Sun Kick. Second in your priority list is to never cap on your Renewing Mist charges because if you press Renewing Mist, it'll be ticking away. You're gaining value by just having it on cooldown. So you never want to cap. Make sure you don't sit at two charges of Renewing Mist. After those spells are, are basically taken care of, you don't have two Renewing Mist charges, your Rising Sun Kicks on cooldown, you can simply pick a target to channel Soothing Mist into and spam some Vivifies. Even picking a target, casting Enveloping Mist, and then spamming some Vivifies is totally fine. Since you'll just do solid throughput, especially since you're not in the middle of your ramp, you'll be sitting at a lower or medium Renewing Mist count, so those Cleaving Vivifies will hit pretty hard and help your constant throughput. Another excellent filler spell is your Manatee. As you can probably guess, since our mana has been seeing so many nerfs with Rashox being nerfed, our new tier set doesn't give us any mana back, and Cloud of Focus just being less mana efficient, we're going to blast through our mana bar. It's going to take a lot of time for you to get used to not blowing through our mana bar. But Manatee is going to be very good, very helpful during these downtime windows. You're going to want to have a buff as much as you can during these downtime windows. Since it gives you mana back based on how long you drink it, but it also gives you time. For every stack that you drink or you consume, you're going to get a second of mana reduction. A buff that gives you mana reduction on any spell that you cast. So during all this downtime, I can sip my Manatee and then get back into the healing. Since it'll extend our mana bar, it'll just allow us to do more healing over the course of a fight. And then that is also where Essence Font comes in. So a big downside to Essence Font is it's 18,000 mana cost. That's a ton of mana. However, if you cast or if you quick channel a one stack manatee or just quick consume a one stack manatee before you cast Essence Font, now all of a sudden it only casts 9,000 mana. And since Yulon is a, a minute cooldown, but Thunder Focus T is a 30 second cooldown, you not only will be able to cast a Thunder Focus T before your Yulon window, but you'll also be able to split your two Yulons in half by another Thunder Focus T cast, since it cuts that cooldown in half. So what you can do during that downtime, once your Thunder Focus T, right once it comes up, you can channel a Mana T for a couple seconds or maybe one second, and then Thunder Focus T and Essence Font get a nice juicy burst of healing, get good value out of just a couple of global cooldowns. So say that Thunder Focus T just came off cooldown, Yulon would probably be sitting at about like 30, 31 seconds of its cooldown. All you do is just channel one stack or a couple stacks of Mana T, and then essence font and then it was cheap it only cost 9,000 mana it's good burst healing 
And like I said, since Essence Font was buffed, it's now it's it's a fine filler spell during these downtime windows because it's kind of like a bursty little cooldown if you let its upwelling stack up to 18 stacks. However, it's not as efficient to press if you don't Thunder Focus T boost it because you sit there and you channel for so long. But Thunder Focus T makes you channel it twice as fast, making it twice as efficient of a button to press. And then even though we're outside of our Yulon window, you still, still want to be chasing those Chi Harmony buffs. So if your Rising Sun Kick is off cooldown and you have no Renewing Mist charges and you're about to pick a target to Soothing Mist channel into, pick a target with your Chi Harmony because it will then lead to more healing then we're going to Rising Mist, and you see that Chi Harmony pops for a good amount of healing. So just always look to optimize your Chi Harmony buffs by just picking a target that simply has that buff. And last but not least, I'm going to go over two other ways that you can optimize your Chi Harmony buffs during these downtime windows. And that is one, by renewing misting yourself and then casting expel harm expel harm does a ton of healing and it's one global cooldown one quick global cooldown that feeds a lot of healing into that chi harmony buff so that when it pops it'll do a good amount of healing anyways but another way that you can really get just quick easy value out of your chi harmony buffs during this downtime is just by casting a shaloon's gift into that target now obviously you got to be careful with this because you do want to make sure that you have a longer duration buff of shao's lesson coming in to your yulon ramp window but if you have just finished your yulon ramp and you might be sitting at like two or three stacks of shaloon's gift and the next shao's lesson buff that you're going to get isn't your most optimal one then it's totally fine to cast a Renewing Mist on a target, and then a, a Shailun's Gift onto that same target so that you do a ton of healing. You see that 337,000 healing into that target, and then once that Chi Harmony pops, 20% of that will be redistributed. But like I said, that is a, a lesser case scenario because right here I have one stack of Shailun's Gift you're going to see. It only does 33,000. It's not that much value at low stacks. So that's just another way that you can kind of cycle through those buffs and then optimize your next Yulon window a little bit more. But let's go through our priority list one last time during this downtime. And it's, it's pretty simple. Rising Sun Kick on cooldown. That's your number one rule. So you want to stay in melee. 100% of the time if you can manage it. And then number two is we're gonna make sure that we are not at two renewing mist charges, whether that be to cast both of them at once or just casting one every few seconds once you're about to hit that cap. Either way works, you're just losing value out of this powerful spell, this powerful hot, by letting it sit at two stacks. And then if renewing mist is not sitting at two charges, your rising sun kicks off cooldown, Pick a target with Chi Harmony to spam some Vivifies into, and you can even cast an Enveloping Mist into that target and spam some Vivifies as well. But since your Cloud of Focus doesn't ramp up like it used to, it's not as powerful or it doesn't peak as high, you don't have to sit and channel onto the same target as much. Just heal them to full. Do like two or three Vivify casts into them, and then it's totally fine to pick a new target, another target with Chi Harmony that needs healing to channel into. But if you only need one Vivify to top someone up, say someone's at like 95% health and they're the only person that needs healing, just cast your instant cast Vivify from Viv Vivacious Vivification. Or if you're if you're just gonna cast a couple Vivifies on different targets, it's totally fine to just cast a single Vivify into them. But like I said, if you're gonna channel more than just one Vivify into a single target, always channel your Soothing Mist because it's just more value. And then after that, once your Thunder Focus T is ready, you can use it on Essence Font. If you're really in some downtime, you can Renewing Mist yourself and then cast Expel Harm. But for the most part, your downtime is gonna be just cycling be between Rising Sun Kick, Renewing Mist, and then picking a target to channel Soothing Mist into picking another target to channel Soothing Mist into until you're about to come up on these other spells. You cast them, and you just pick a target. It's pretty simple, but it does get weird since nowadays we don't press Tiger Palm or Blackout Kick, and we're adding in Essence Font into the fray. And then last but not least, the last trick that I'm gonna teach you guys to help you with your mana bar, since that probably will be a very sore spot for a lot of new players is your mana bar. I'm gonna teach you the Transcendence Transfer trick. Now I have a total, like a full video on this trick, but how it works is at, since we're taking the talent Escape from Reality, after we use Transcendence Transfer, after we swap places with that Transcendence 
little body of ours. Whenever we cast a Vivify into ourself, we're just gonna get 50% of that mana refunded into us. And it and it's 50% of Vivify's full mana value. So we're gonna get 4,250 mana every Vivify that we cast into ourselves for the next 10 seconds after we transfer. Now, if you if you couple that with either getting innervated by a druid or using our own mana tea to reduce the cost of the vivifies that we're actually casting and cloud of focus, any of those, we're gonna be gaining mana from those vivifies. So let me go and show you what that looks like. And this is very good, a very good tool that you can use during those downtime periods to just extend your mana bar further. Now, obviously the best use of transcendence transfer is to dodge mechanics, especially like knockbacks. If you know a boss is about to knock you back and you might wanna save your transfer for that scenario, don't use this mana trick. However, in downtime, a lot of times you can really plan around this just to get extra mana back during a fight. So I'm gonna mana T to just reduce the cost of my vivifies. I'm gonna renewing this myself just so that I can store all of this vivify healing into a chi harmony. And then I'm gonna use my transcendence transfer and just spam vivifies into myself so that I gain mana back. I get refunded 4,250 mana each vivify. And since those vivifies are gonna cost less than that 4,250, I'm just gonna gain mana each time. So manatee, manatee, we're gonna renewing mist myself. I'm gonna transfer and then just cast vivifies into myself. And as you see, my mana bar is not moving. It is not moving. If I was missing mana, you would see my mana bar kind of going up. But that's just another trick that you can do during the downtime. It doesn't do a ton of healing since a lot of times you'll be spamming into yourself at full health. However, you're gonna be cleaving on anyone that has Renewing Mist and you're gonna be storing all of that healing into a Chi Harmony that will heal all those people with Renewing Mist. And you're extending your mana bar so that later in the fight you can do more healing when it matters. But guys, that is every single thing that you'll need to know from Mistweaver coming into 10.2. Like I said earlier, there are two other builds that I'll be making guides on that are pretty different from this one. And those are like a Chi G Ancient Teachings build for Raid, and then also a Tier of Mourning build for Raid. So stay tuned for those. I'll get working on those. As you can hear, I'm, pro I'm, I'm pretty sick, so it was kind of hard making this video. A lot of cuts. So it might take a little bit of time, but thank you so much for being patient with me. And I hope that you were able to take something away from this video i hope that it helped you get ready for this raid because we are going to be slamming some healing we do have a lot of room for optimization because of the square root scaling but that will only come into play in the next few weeks once we get all this these damage patterns down and we can learn how many renewing mists is optimal for each boss mechanic so for the most part as long as you master the ramp as long as you master the downtime you will be doing a ton of healing and having a lot of a lot of fun doing it. But guys, my name is LB Ninja 7 You have a lot of resources down in the description below, so make sure and take advantage of those. I love making these guide videos for you, and I love the Patreons that support this channel. That's right, we are plugging the Patreons. If you see your name on the screen, thank you so much for all the support that you bring to this channel, helping me live my dream of being a full-time YouTuber. As you can imagine, being a Mistweaver YouTuber is not the most fruitful thing, but you guys make it worth it. Thank you so much for all the support lately. We just hit 4,200 subscribers, so thank you so much. That is a milestone I never thought I'd reach. Thank you all so much. But guys, I'll let you get into the action, start your grinding for 10.2. I really appreciate you clicking on this video, and let me know if I missed anything down below in the comment section that you think will be important for other players to know. But for the meantime, that's gonna do it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care.